Hello, and thank you all for joining us today for Agritech's Travel Free Digital Conference Series. My name is Javi Demidi Abraham, and my guest today is Vincent Harkowitz from Gronetics. He's the co-founder and CEO of a company that has developed a software platform that integrates data from all kinds of different hardware components of vertical farms and greenhouses. Uh, today, Vincent is joining us to tell us a little bit about himself, his company, and how his company's solution can help uh, farmers, both in greenhouses, vertical farms, and other indoor farms, to optimize their production. Vincent, would you like to talk a bit about your company and what you guys do? Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, so my background's uh, before Gronetics was in indoor cultivation as well as in industrial design and manufacturing. Um, I spent about six years in China uh, before starting Gronetics, launching a industrial design and manufacturing business actually, which was ended up becoming the founding inspiration for Gronetics. Um, during my time in China, uh, I had experienced a, a great deal of um, uh, pollution in the air, in the food, in the water, and also um, serious challenges with supply chain logistics with a city of uh, 21 million people, I think now over 23 million people, um, where literally there's a three-day reserve uh, for that entire city. Now, it's facts like this that really uh, opened my eyes to uh, where the future of agriculture is going, how we need to really change some of these uh, these old antiquated supply chain uh, chains with new, uh, some more sophisticated distributed models where we have vertical farms and urban farms on rooftops. Um, you know, much of what, of course, what agriculture is is pushing. Um, it's it's definitely an absolute need. But when I went to look at, uh, if I were to start a business um, in this industry for myself, I went to look at, you know, what it would take. I realized there were just no tools uh, to make it easy to spin up an indoor farming business. You know, I think around the same time, agriculture, uh, uh, maybe a similar founding story where there just aren't very many best practices. There aren't very many, uh, there isn't a very good understanding of what's possible with systems that are out there. And so that was kind of the genesis for uh, Gronetics. Um, and we didn't want to just, from my experience in China, we didn't want to just be another, uh, you know, sensor manufacturer. We wanted to help hardware manufacturers and support all these fantastic technologies uh, in the data they're collecting uh, and giving it context. So kind of the light bulb went off when, um, I realized we don't actually, as an agrarian species, we don't actually have a central database on how to grow every plant best. Um, it just doesn't exist after millennia of, of growing plants, and that's kind of mind-blowing. Um, then realizing that we have the off-the-shelf technology and capabilities to build this, um, but yet a, a, a whole business needs to be um, also matured and brought up at the same time. So that's kind of where we find ourselves today. Um, Gronetics was started about, about five years ago and uh, really built on this premise of, look, we know that in indoor agriculture and controlled environment growing, anywhere you're controlling anything, you're gonna have sensors. And when you have sensors, you have a lot of data and that data can either sit completely unused or you can link it to yield outcomes and immediately get it just a, a massive amount of value out of that data. And so we set out to build a, a farm management platform that really linked um, the what we think are the three legs of the stool that you need to understand for growing plants. And that is um, environment around uh, the plant itself, the, the, um, the canopy and the root zone, the feeds uh, around what's being fed to the plant at what times and what irrigation schedules. And then thirdly, the tasks and the actions that are being done to that plant. So with those three things, we can really, really come to a deep understanding of what's leading to certain yield outcomes. Um, and so that's what we built as, as a platform to understand that. And um, we took an open approach. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull up the, the presentation now and share my screen here. So I have a that would little be great. Bit of visual aid as I go through. Thank you. So in CEA, we have a bunch of challenges, but in that old premise of the obstacle is the way, those are also opportunities. So 
Um, in this new industry, uh, there's very few best practices. So most farms are still managed with pen and paper or a handful of inconsistent tools. Um, but this is an opportunity for companies who are willing to invest in uh, ongoing R&D, that are willing to invest in uh, in understanding their business pro uh, processes and improving those, those are the ones who are going to develop proprietary strategies to develop, deliver very efficient, very low cost produce um, and really move this industry forward. The second aspect and challenge of this industry is it has kind of a Wright Brothers kind of a new era of flight kind of feeling to it where every new uh, smart farming or indoor farming company um, is really still trying to pilot whether their theory is going to work um, because again this is so new and so really i just want to emphasize and i will emphasize over and over again just how early we are uh, in indoor farming in controlled environment agriculture and um, so in that same sense if all this innovation is happening in completely different systems. If we as a collective uh, community want to understand what's really leading to the most nutritious and the most efficient way to grow produce, to grow medicine, uh, we have to be sharing that data um, a, a in order to move forward quickly. And that leads me to winners compete together, which is that thankfully in this industry, um, the leaders are competing together. They are interested in sharing best practices. They are very much interested in working together to build a new industry and support farmers and cultivators and people and entrepreneurs who want to get involved in getting involved. It's a fantastic industry to be in, one where um, the community is really here to support each other. Um, and there are some, unfortunately, groups that do I do come across every now and again, which really truly believe they are the bee's knees and they want to stick their head in the sand. They think they got the best everything. And often it's those groups who end up, um, you know, climbing the Canadian stock market and then tanking. <laughs> um, but um, lastly, I'll say that, uh, you know, because this industry is built on industrial controls and automation, uh, it's a digital native. Right, and with that comes big data. So in this new field of controlled environment ag, um, if you're not taking advantage of that data, you're, you're missing a huge opportunity. Um, so that takes me to making decisions with data because that's what we want to be doing. If you're not making those continuous improvement decisions as a cultivator, as a grower with data um, and keeping that uh, beginner mindset to always be learning, then um, it's really just based on assumptions and that's not science and that's not going to lead to any real repetitive results, right? And so um, it's my goal in this presentation to share with the audience that um, even without Gronetics, uh, this can be done manually, right? And some of the best cultivators, they are forced to do this manually and have been forced to do this manually because they will not um, um, they will not accept anything less than precision, right? And so um, some aspects, some tools uh, that, that need to be implemented in any controlled environment grow are absolutely environmental sensors and crop sensors, um, uh, greenhouse environmental control systems, uh, irrigation and fertigation systems, and then task management, workflow automation, and mechanical automation tools. And then different software tools to give that data context, like ERP tools or compliance tools. And um, you begin to understand just with just these five elements, how complicated it can quickly become to run an indoor or a greenhouse or a CEA farming business. Because you have all these opportunities that you can chase down in terms of efficiency gains or in terms of yield improvements or quality improvements. But it's, there's also so many places that need to be working before you can even begin to pursue those improvements. And so actually what we find uh, in the reality of the market today is it's so new that um, even with this data, it's only the talented cultivators who have the experience who are able to take advantage of it. And for the most part, new farming businesses are really struggling to um, just get into a rhythm uh, of generating cash flow. Uh, again, because the lack of measuring. And so um, 
really I want to share during the course of this presentation just how many tools and options there are. And at the end, we'll have some links and some resources uh, of different tools that are not only fantastic professional quality tools, but actually um, open source and with a little elbow grease and um, uh, self-learning can actually be deployed for free um, at your farm. So I mentioned continuous improvement, and that's the whole key here. Because there are not best practices in this industry, every site and every system is a little different. And indoor cultivators know if you put a plant, the same plant in the same system in two different buildings, it will grow differently because of the unique aspects of just the building it's in. You have the same feed system, this, you think the same environmental set points, and it, we just understand there's so many different levers that we, we are just beginning to scratch the surface of that really understanding this continuous improvement is key. And so understanding these different elements of knowledge work, machine work, biosecurity, hygiene, and traceability. Right, these are all different elements of work that we need to be understanding and trying to continuously improve. And in terms of the equipment and sensors that are on the market that are available to every single cultivator in the world are your basic environmental sensors, your temperature, humidity, relative humidity, uh, your CO2 and your PAR, which is the, um, the amount of light the plant can actually use. And um, of course, we also want to have a deep understanding when we're growing in controlled environments of vapor pressure deficit or VPD, which is a better understanding of how the plant is able to um, move moisture from its leaf surface. And that's really only possible through your temperature and relative humidity monitoring, right? And so if we're not understanding those levers, we're not really doing controlled environment agriculture, uh, we're guessing. Um, and then must-haves, of course, also soil moisture, understanding how our plants are, are, are eating and drinking in the environment, nutrient EC, uh, uh, that's electrical conductivity or the salts content of what you're feeding, the pH, um, the acidity essentially of, of what you're feeding the plants, dissolved oxygen and temperature, and any, uh, any professional or um, uh, even prosumer hobbyist is going to be using these tools. Um, even your STEM classrooms with their hydroponic systems will be checking these with, with manual probes. So this is not really any, any surprise to have it on the list here. But just to mention that this is the data, the bare minimum that should be being collected, and ideally in a real-time basis and automatically linked to every plant. And then the nice-to-haves, if we're doing some breeding work, if we're doing Really, if you're trying to continuously improve, you're going to want to understand how to improve your nutrient regimens. So you're going to want to have NPK sensors, magnesium, calcium, understanding of really what are the macro and micronutrient minerals going into these plants that are leading to these yield outcomes. Runoff sensors that, are, that, are, that help us understand what the plants are eating and drinking in real time and changing the acidity content of, of, of the nutrient solution. Um, and then soil EC, pH, and temp so we can really get in the nitty gritty of what that root zone environment is. And that's where you start to get award winning harvests. And that's where the champions, that's what they're doing. They're really getting to that level of precision. Um, and then in many types of agriculture, uh, post harvest is uh, even more crucial because all of that investment in work and money and energy and coal that's gone into growing these plants in a controlled environment, if they're not stored, the plants aren't stored ideally in an ideal environment or cured in, a, in the case of cannabis and hemp properly in the post-harvest environment, then all that time and money is for nothing. And the quality that that grower has put into that harvest is for nothing because it doesn't reach the customer. And so water activity is another monitoring tool that we like to push, water activity sensors. It's kind of like VPD, but it's in the, the plant itself and understanding the plant's um, uh, ability to uh, what its real water content is. And so we can do understand it's not going to get contamination if we understand we can keep the water activity of the plant at the right level. And now, of course, the goal is to then take that data 
and correlate it to every plant and batch. And that, you know, the ability of a, of a indoor cultivator to do that is really going to be dependent on their experience and capabilities and time um, and staff. And so um, while this is definitely a, a nice goal to have, it's not mandatory to run a farm, right? Um, but to try to get to, this is a great place to try to get to, to be able to understand not just the macro climate, so generally what my greenhouse environment is, but really what are my micro climates in my indoor room or in my greenhouse or in my vertical farm? If that's vertical, then you're going to be wanting to look at different tiers in 3D, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and then same with the root biome, same with the feed. And then we get into IPM because this is something crucial to doing uh, high quality cultivation indoors in an artificial environment, which is that we're growing primarily not in a permaculture bio, you know, um, uh, food forest indoors, like the biodome at, you know, in Arizona. Primarily, this is like very tightly controlled um, um, monocultures indoors where it's ripe for uh, vectors of infection and pests because it's not probiotic and um, uh, in nature in most cultivations. Now that's, there's a lot of innovation happening there and that's where we like to see like innovation because actually um, it's those probiotic techniques, those organic indoor techniques, which are the most exciting because you get highly nutritious food in the, from the controlled environment. Instead of, unfortunately, you know, hydroponic food has gotten a little bit of a bad rap over the years um, because it's, uh, unfortunately, some companies are just trying, you know, being like uh, your, your bottom of the barrel produce, as long as it's big and red and shiny, even if it has no nutritional value, you know, it, it moves off the shelves. So again, I mean, you're always fighting this this kind of um, these values here of, of being able to scale cheaply, but then trying to maintain that quality. Um, and then nutrient reports and labor reports, of course, we want to understand our costs properly and how they're relating to what we're growing so that we can optimize for that. Um, a lot of people don't understand how their labor is affecting their yields, um, and they'd like to throw people at a problem, um, and that's just never the solution. Uh, we, they, you always have to get the first principles to understand like how, wh why, where can we remove people from going into the grow rooms, because that's typically the vector for infection and disease. Absolutely. And if you have all this data in one place, um, then operators don't really need to go in the in the grow room to get that data. So I think the, the nature of the, the relationship between the hardware and the centralized uh, software platform lends itself nicely to being able to remove those vectors from the grow space, which naturally improves uh, integrated pest management by, uh, by itself. You got it. You, you 100% got it. And it's that really that... Um, understanding this integrated approach right um and that you can it's only then that you can really start to improve but what i was saying earlier is in this industry even just getting to that is a win right mm -hmm. getting to an integrated business approach getting your systems dialed in to a fully integrated almost like a self-driving farm right really dialing it in so it's moving like clockwork that's should be step one for every indoor and greenhouse farm out there and then after that, then you can start to really step on the gas uh, and really know where to apply um, your extra capital from those efficiency gains. Um, and it's really going to be dependent on every business where that is. Um, and so you are also mentioning, you know, again, that task management element. And that brings us to this page here, which is that... Um, it's people growing plants still. While there are companies like Iron Ox and several others who are trying plenty and, and who are trying to really highly, highly automate, that's not a reality for uh, most indoor cultivators yet. And so we still need people. Uh, we want highly qualified, highly skilled people uh, uh, to be doing this work so that um, we don't have to uh, rely on um, uh, just throwing mass labor at problems, right? So it's still important that we think when we're doing controlled environment, urban farming, that we're being efficient with our plant logistics, how we're moving our plants and all that, um, even if we don't have robots. And so that's just because of vectors of disease and infection. Um, you just want to minim constantly be minimizing, minimizing, minimizing. And then especially in today's era, 
you know, we see people, our customers being able to operate facilities with very, very few personnel um, because of, as you mentioned, that remote monitoring capability where they have a literal digital twin of their real world environments in 3D. So they can understand, you know, um, uh, that they feel comfortable uh, taking a vacation <laughs> or comfortable letting their farm operate you know, and having the assistant uh, run things for a little while because they have that visibility. Absolutely. So I didn't share some of these with you, but I, want, I thought it was important that we talk about some real world case studies um, so that uh, viewers can see really what's possible, okay? Because Gronetics has been involved in some of the most advanced indoor farming projects in North America and are just getting involved in more and more. And we are entirely built on open innovation and open source, okay? Um, case study one was a project in Northern California where we designed and built uh, a, a control system and monitoring platform for this unique hybrid lighting system that two PhD researchers at Flourish Farms had, um, had wanted to test and, and to measure the capabilities of. So they came up with this fantastic model and this is something that works. We have the data. We know that we can grow plants with uh, solar tubes and LEDs at 40% greater efficiency than LED alone, 90% greater efficiency than high, high intensity discharge lighting. Now, scaling this model is you know, the challenge that everyone's faced with right now, but we have the data to show that you don't have to turn your HVAC systems on with, this, with a, a platform like this. You uh, aren't air conditioning the sun like in a greenhouse, but you get to take advantage of full spectrum light and also the way the sun moves across the sky, getting nice light penetration into your canopy. And so um, just a fascinating project, all open source uh, innovation built into that. Case study two is Dalwini Farms in Colorado. So um, this is a uh, the vision of one of our early customers, Travis Howard and his partner, Reed Cannabis, uh, or Reed, <laughs> Reed Cannabis. Uh, um, uh, I'll check myself on that one. But um, uh, Travis and Reed really set themselves out to build a state-of-the-art research facility. Um, and they did it. Uh, this is the most impressive indoor cultivation facility with very, very tight controls uh, at the time that it was built. They are now controlling their facility within a degree of each of these rooms and within easily 2% RH because of years of dialing in these rooms with the Gronetics platform running the facility. So, um, and the beautiful looking gentleman you see in this photo, Cody, uh, runs the grow there and um, he'll walk around and if he gets an alert on a, in a microclimate being out of an ideal condition, he can go in there and move a fan. And literally that is, that's precision, right? Understanding that level of, um, of microclimate and being able to adjust, um, uh, adjust accordingly within, within the rooms. So just a very, very impressive, and they're the ones running, you know, a, a very large facility with incredibly minimal staff because of their remote location in the mountains by Telluride. Wow, that's an, an incredibly impressive uh, level of specificity they're able to get with the RH and temperature. Yeah, it, it's, it's, again, it took um, a very rigorous uh, startup and commissioning process. Right, and that's something that again, a lot of smart farming companies, indoor farming companies don't take into account. You're going to have, no matter what, you have the best systems in the world. If you don't take into account that your specific site location is gonna be different to everybody else's and that you need to go through a very rigorous startup and commissioning process to ensure those systems are performing to their spec, it'll never perform to what you bought. And so, again, um, uh, a great case study to showcase just what's possible when you really focus on that continuous improvement. Very interesting. Um, 
and then uh, just an another greenhouse uh, hybrid greenhouse or or uh, controlled environment greenhouse project to go over, which is a hemp cultivation, a hemp research facility, crops for health in here in uh, Denver, Colorado. So they're a vertically integrated uh, CBD um, uh, nutraceutical company, and so uh, again a fantastic example of a very experienced. Uh, a businessman who uh, started this business uh, with a focus very, very heavily on quality and research. And so it was a no brainer that from day one, all this, all this microclimate and environmental and crop data must be, um, must be collected uh, to understand what's leading to these outcomes. They have geneticists on staff, they're doing breeding programs. Again, just a, a phenomenal model of, of what best practices look like and taking advantage of off the shelf technology in order to make sure those decisions and that continuous improvement is done based on data and not based on conjecture. So um, I just wanted to make sure I got those case studies in there because sometimes, you know, in these presentations, um, we can talk about all these great ideas and, you know, pie in the sky notions, but none of this is, is pie in the sky whatsoever. Um, Gronetics is already uh, helping some of the most sophisticated operators now getting to the 100, 200 plus thousand square feet controlled environment cultivation facilities. Um, and um, that's because we've been doing it for so long and actually executing and operating indoor facilities with this platform. Now, we're definitely not going to rec recommend anybody go out and build a commercial facility with a Raspberry Pi, but um, I do want to show that um, you could actually do a smaller scale one for sure for your monitoring platform 100% you know, that would be a, a good application for that, but, you know, definitely not uh, once you get over 10, 20,000 square feet. Um, so some of these resources and tools here, I wanted to make sure I got out. Um, so in ERP, ERP is one of the most crucial things missing in this industry, understanding all the aspects of costing from every element of the operation. And so some open source ERPs, I think everybody should look at are ERP Next and Odoo ERP. Um, ERP Next being the more affordable of the two. Uh, and then uh, for inventory tracking and barcoding, every business needs this, whether you're tracking plants or test samples. And so Snipe IT is a fantastic resource to, to manage and uh, create your own um, database to track all that. And then Gronetics, I have to, of course, mention, uh, because we are uh, the world's only open source indoor smart farming operating platform. Uh, and then on the sensing and automation tools side, I would be remiss if I didn't give credit to Arduino and Raspberry Pi, who have really pioneered open hardware and open sensing um, uh, to the masses. Uh, but there are other projects for industrial controls like Open SCADA, and then um, prosumer home automation projects like Open Hab and Home Assistant will actually do what most commercial automation, like prosumer commercial automation. Uh, products do, as in turning things on and off on a schedule or based on a sensor input. Um, that's all built into these tools. Uh, if if uh, if you're looking for somebody to help you build some electronics or to buy some open source electronics, definitely check out Tindy. Uh, it's an open source uh, electronics marketplace from of makers. And then Spark Fun and Adafruit are some of the big names providing some of this educational uh, uh, tools out there and open source hardware. And then I want to shout out Libra CEA, which is a friend of uh, Gronetics, um, uh, our friend Cameron, who's working on an open source uh, uh, CEA hardware system. Um, so more to come on that in the, the coming months. And uh, we'll be helping to announce and launch some of those initiatives through Gronetics. And then um, I want to make sure I touch on these community links too. So um, open innovation in agriculture isn't just for indoor and greenhouse farming, it's for all agriculture. And so I, I encourage everybody to check out the Gathering for Open Ag Tech. Uh, it's a forum uh, with a bunch of people around the world, universities all participating in open innovation around agriculture. Farmhack.org is a related site where some of these projects live. Um, and then I want to also encourage everyone and invite everybody to join our open CEA forum. So this is a new forum we started at Gronetics with the focus on open innovation in controlled environment growing. Uh, 
or indoor growing. Uh, and then we also have a community chat that everyone's welcome to jump in uh, and join. And then uh, the last two things I want to share are community, uh, a community open source list of great tools and resources. And that's that GitHub awesome self-hosted list. And that's just anybody in the world contributing great open source self-hosted projects that you could install on your own home computer or server for free if you have the know-how. And then uh, shout out to my partner, Nick Busey's personal project, Home Lab OS, which also helps make it very easy to deploy a lot of these technologies um, it, with, with it just within a couple minutes. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the presentation. And um, yeah, let's go into the Q&A. Absolutely. Thank you very much. That was extremely interesting and, and just an absolutely uh, wonderful and thorough overview of what you guys do at Granetics. Um, I do have a few questions um, about, uh, you know, the way you guys operate, um, kind of what market sectors do you guys target with your product? And if you were to have an ideal client, what would that client be like? So we target primarily the hemp cannabis and research uh, industries. So hemp and cannabis being that they're funding the majority of indoor agriculture and controlled environment growing uh, innovation right now. Um, there's just no questioning that's where the most growth is coming in and indoor and controlled environment growing is from cannabis and hemp markets. Um, so that's in a big bucket, that would be the primary one. And then uh, research institutions. So universities um, or, or private research groups looking to do some more sophisticated and uh, efficient crop analytics. Very interesting. Um, what about food growers? Do you guys have any uh, food growers in your portfolio? Not yet, um, although I'm very excited to start to get Gronetics ready for different uh, niches. Um, okay. So, of course, one of the reasons that we're so heavy on open source is that we want to make it easy for anybody to adapt this technology for other types of uh, cultivation uh, methods and, and difficult different crops. So uh, right now, this is very much designed around a tray-based or pot-based uh, process. So it could easily work for somebody who's working in trays and pots already for like cut flowers or something like that. Um, but, uh, or, or um, perhaps uh, ornamentals and, and uh, you know, things like that. But when it comes to food with, with for example, uh, berries or tomatoes, there's a whole different workflow around growing these crops. Lettuce, even lettuce, there's a whole different workflow around growing these plants with lower requirements than we necessarily have in hemp and cannabis or pharmaceutical plant production where there's just um, almost an absurd amount of compliance required to grow these plants. Um, and so uh, while we're really excited for the software and technology to be appropriated for those different crops, we're not quite there yet. So, you know, again, the open source initiative is really our hope to accelerate that. Very interesting. And I think you um, answered part of my next question, which is, uh, what does the future of your product development look like? Yeah, so that's, um, uh, that's a great question. And, and, and thanks for asking it, because it just so happens that this quarter, we're going to be launching a, a next generation of the Gronetics. Um, oh, wow. Uh, Very exciting. So it's, uh, we're launching a entirely wireless and battery powered option. Um, the way that Gronetics is deployed today is very much to be built in place for new builds. So um, uh, it's, if we're gonna be driving controls off of these sensors, we want them hardwired in place and um, uh, to really have reliable connections. But, when, but unfortunately that excludes a majority of the existing marketplace because 95% are not new builds. Um, so this new, we hope this new wireless battery powered uh, system will really help every, give access to Gronetics to every cultivator. And then we're also uh, um, deploying a STEM version, a STEM kit on a Raspberry Pi. So to showcase that even from um, a small uh, hobbyist or an education or a school, uh, with a Raspberry Pi and a few sensors can use Gronetics and do crop analytics and start contributing data to um, our open plant database, which is uh, that open database to collect all this data for every crop worldwide. 
Um, so all you need is a Raspberry Pi and a few sensors and you can start using Ronetics. Uh, and that would be, you know, essentially helping people to do it for free uh, on their own in a DIY kind of way. So we're trying to really target these two massive elements of the market that we feel are not being addressed well, which are, um, you know, the, the, the smaller startup cultivators as well as um, educators. Uh, teachers. A lot of this grow technology is very expensive and hard to get access to for teachers. And universities ask us all the time, like, how do our researchers not have access to tools like this? Well, they haven't existed before. <laughs> I see. <laughs> very cool. And I'm sure that's going to help much more of the market um, access the the platform um, and and be enabled by the the um, you know the data analytics that you guys provide your existing clients. Um, that's really, really interesting. And I think something that's going to benefit the industry tremendously as you guys move forward uh, with your product development um, and those products, uh, you know, enter the marketplace. Um, so thank you, Vincent. This was a, a fantastic session uh, for our digital conference. Um, we really appreciate you joining us today. Um, you're a fantastic guest with a, a really interesting uh, product and, and software service. Um, and, and we hope to see more farms adopted in the near future. And uh, enable themselves to take advantage of that uh, data component. Um, so once again, for our audience, my guest is Vincent Harkowitz from Gronetics. Um, and uh, Vincent, uh, would you, do you have some closing statements you'd like to uh, say to our audience? Um, yeah, first I'd just like to say, uh, I've been incredibly impressed with how uh, quickly that agritecture uh, put this on. And it is really fulfilling a huge need in this industry. I myself am getting a lot out of the presentations as well. So um, kudos to you and your team and to everybody working hard over there. And then I wanted to just mention that um, there's gonna be a lot of changes in how people think about food and there already have been a lot of changes in how people think about food after this, um, uh, this COVID pandemic has swept across the world. And um, I know that CSAs, demand at CSAs are going through the roof, that local farming and local agriculture and really the values of society seem to be falling more in line with our necessities. And um, that's very encouraging. But farmers are also unfortunately killing themselves at near double the rate of veterans. Um, that's this unfortunate statistic that I learned earlier this year. And that means that the way that farm businesses um, get launched and get operated are very poorly supported by the community and by the institutions that are support, supposed to be supporting these farmers. And so, um, again, I just want to encourage everybody to really look at what they can do to help to improve the current state of the food supply chain, to support their local agricultural uh, businesses, whether that's markets, delivery people, or farmers themselves, or restaurants, um, supporting local farmers. Uh, and it's just one of these bigger, much bigger uh, challenges that we as a community need to face. Um, and uh, it, it just showcases a lot, a lot, a lot of the, um, the, the, the potholes or the gaps right now in the way that food is delivered. Um, and so unfortunately, I'm sorry to close it with that, but um, that's really what Try, I, I try to focus on is how can we as a community uh, really change change these statistics and and stop them becoming statistics and start moving towards really um, productive farming businesses that are well supported by the community. Well, thank you very much for those closing thoughts. I mean, it, it's incredibly heartbreaking the the statistic you mentioned, um, and we appreciate entrepreneurs like yourselves uh, working to develop products. Um, and tools to enable this industry um, to, to produce better food um, and to create better lives for farmers. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today uh, for your work in developing these, um, you know, these necessary data management platforms. Um, and our audience is, is equally grateful for the work you guys are doing. So thank you very much, Vincent, for joining us today. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing your products in the market very shortly. Thanks, David. Thanks Appreciate a lot. It. Take care. Bye.